Carl Jung compared Hitler to Mohammed. This might shock you. In this video I will address some very important questions such as why did he do this? Why is this so important? And most importantly, why the comparison is actually correct. Stay tuned. Contrary to what most people might think, when Hitler just came to power people didn't respond in the way that they should have responded, given what happened a few years after. Hitler's rise to power wasn't that much of a shocking event, given the historical context. The Russian Revolution already happened, and in Italy, Mussolini had already taken power. So given the time period, Hitler's rise to power really wasn't that outrageous. Many people thought that it was actually a good thing. Germany's economy was a disaster, and Hitler rebuilt Germany's economy. And it worked. Therefore Nazi Germany even attracted foreign investors. And what about all the radical rhetoric? The truth is that people in that time period thought, ah well, there is a distance between words and actions, so it probably won't be as bad in the end. However, the Swiss psychiatrist and psychoanalyst who set the basis of analytical psychology, Carl Jung, thought differently. And this man is quite important within the area of study that is today called psychology. It is not like his ideas still have a lot of influence today, but every student of psychology probably knows who this man is. Carl Jung. And when he looked at what was going on in Germany, he was very concerned. But in order to explain what he saw, he didn't have an example of a situation with which he could compare what he saw in a way that everybody understood. Today, when a situation like this occurs, people just compare it to Nazi Germany and everybody immediately understands the comparison that is made. Ah, that situation. But of course, Carl Jung couldn't use Nazi Germany as an example to compare Nazi Germany to, because the Second World War still was about to happen, and nobody knew that it was about to happen. So in order to explain what he saw in Nazi Germany, Carl Jung had to find the best example that he could, in order to explain what he saw. And this example wasn't Italy, and it wasn't the Russian Revolution, and it wasn't Christianity at its worst moment. In order to explain what it was that he saw happening in Nazi Germany, the comparison that Carl Jung came up with was Islam. And this is extremely important today. He used Prophet Muhammad. Carl Jung wrote, quote, We do not know whether Hitler is going to found a new Islam. He is already on the way. He is like Mohammed. The emotion in Germany is Islamic. Warlike and Islamic. They're all drunk with the wild god. The best example in order to explain what he saw happening in Germany that he could find was Islam. And as you can expect given the horrible state of today's education system, if it comes to areas of study related to history and civilization, most people don't know that Carl Jung wrote this. Not even university students who are studying psychology and who do know Carl Jung, and who might even have learned some of his basic theories, do not know that Carl Jung compared Hitler to Mohammed. Because these universities are politically correct and far left, and they will never teach students anything that doesn't fit perfectly within the boundaries of politically correct thought. So this is extremely important. Carl Jung didn't use Mussolini's Italy as an example. Just think about this. He didn't use Mussolini's Italy. He also didn't use the emotions during the 30 years war as an example. And he didn't use the Spanish Inquisition as an example. What he saw was something else than these things. He saw the psychological state of the people living in Nazi Germany and he compared it to the psychological state of supporters of the ideology that is Islam. And this comparison actually makes perfect sense if you take a honest look at both ideologies. Because what Nazism and Islam have in common are the following. Both are collectivist ideologies that make a distinction between people who belong to the group and people who do not belong to the group. There are Aryans and non-Aryans. There are Muslims 
and non-Muslims. Both are supremacist ideologies that claim that members of the group are superior to people who are not members of the group. Muslims are superior, the rest is inferior. Both are totalitarian ideologies which do not allow for people to go against that which is dictated and both ideologies are anti-Jew which really doesn't need any clarification. And as a logical consequence of these ideological similarities, even Hitler himself on multiple occasions spoke very highly of the Muslim world. For example, according to the book Hitler's Apocalypse, Jews and the Nazi Legacy, Hitler said that, quote, the people of Islam will always be closer to us than, for example, France. According to Albert Speer's book Inside the Third Reich, Hitler had learned a lot from a delegation of distinguished Arabs, with whom he speculated that if the Berbers and Arabs had won the Battle of Tours in the 8th century, the Germans would have had, quote, a religion that believed in spreading the faith by the sword and in subjugating all nations to that faith. And that, quote, such a creed was perfectly suited to the German temperament. And, quote, you see it's been our misfortune to have the wrong religion. Why didn't we have the religion of the Japanese who regard sacrifice for the fatherland as the highest good? The Mohammedan religion too would have been much more compatible to us than Christianity. Why did it have to be Christianity with its meekness and flabbiness? So yes, Carl Jung comparing Nazi Germany to Islam wasn't just some random comparison. And it is a pity that people today don't know about this. As a result of the horrible state of the education system, the academic world and the mainstream media.